Along with that, Ross, uh, tell us about your your thoughts of your kids competing on the weekends uh, and how you might kind of rearrange your uh, your scheduling throughout the summer. Because uh, I, I thought that was super interesting, and I know you put it out there uh, for other people to kind of give feedback. So, what what are you thinking with that? The question of the century is is what it is. Uh, I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah. With the well in Florida, it's unbelievable the amount of travel ball there is naturally. Um, mm-hmm. Like when uh, over over New Year's or roughly like the December January time, there was the most baseball players I've ever seen in my life walking around Fort Myers, Florida. Because there's two baseball facilities down here and like everybody's on vacation. They've got some huge travel ball tournaments and all that kind of stuff. But like I know at least one of our kids, one of our football kids is going to play in five tournaments over summer, Um, which holy, you know, over an eight week period, that's pretty, pretty high. And so, yeah. and, And so nevertheless, I know with a layout of Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, I know that I'm going to make Monday the change of direction, uh, tempo day, uh, Mm -hmm. to help recover from the weekend for my travel ball kids. Now don't get me wrong. Like I got plenty of kids that don't do travel ball and they just do their one sport, but I got enough, you know, soccer, basketball, baseball, all that stuff that are playing all the time all summer. Um, and if they're gonna, uh, coach Sparkman made a great point that if they're going to miss, they're pretty much going to miss Monday. Like that's going to be the big day that they miss the most and they'll probably make it yeah. to, to Tuesday or Thursday. And I'm not really going to measure anything on Mondays other than, um, a readiness jump or some sort of jump. Like I, I haven't done readiness mm-hmm. jumps with my kids, uh, this year. I just took a bunch of, of jump data, but I didn't do like cold, hey, you're going to come in and do a hand on hip jump or do three of them before warming up or anything. But I'm going to do that uh, over the summer. And I probably won't do anything with it unless I've got a kid that I had in class. It's more so just to see just to see what, what happens. But, but let Monday be the, the change of direction, tempo focus. Uh, Tuesday... I'm leaning toward max velocity on Tuesday and then uh, Mm -hmm. Wednesday being the acceleration day. Now, the caveat with that is I'm leaning toward max velo on Tuesday because, at least with football, because they also will be playing uh, seven on seven on Wednesday mornings. So they're going to do all that kind of stuff. And I don't want to do Excel Tuesday to then let them go basically play a game and then, Oh, Hey, we're going to do these long sprints the day after you just did seven on seven. Um, and covered yeah. and covered a bunch of yards. And so I'd rather, I'd rather hit it before and then come the next day for acceleration. I can, I can turn down the, the intensity and all that kind of stuff as needed with the guys. And so, and to make that day an Excel day, um, the, the part that I'm, mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out right now is because a barbell RDL for me is going to be a main movement and it's not going to be an accessory. And so where do I put it to not mess up the, the max velo to mess up the the acceleration? I write, I mean, that's my big debate because what I like to do is I like to put trap art deadlift at the end of the week Say, like in a perfect world, I put Mm -hmm. that on Thursday. Now, that would also be aligning for me with max velocity. Now, since I have max velocity on Tuesday, do I put it on Tuesday Mm -hmm. and then I have my front squat or whatever on Thursday or my, or like my RDL? Like, that's my big debate is where can I put RDL in that week to not mess up all the other stuff? I, my opinion is you put RDLs on Tuesday because of the knee angle. 
it's not a deep knee bend and you're really having to focus on posture and like positions of the hips as you're uh, hinging at the hips. So for me, I think you save your trap bar deadlift, your larger knee bend, your larger knee angle for your strength acceleration day on Thursday. And I say you go um, RDL since it's definitely more posterior chain dominant as well with your max velocity day, which should be more posterior chain dominant, right? Like you're going to be hitting the hammies hard in an RDL. You're going to be hitting the hammies hard uh, as you're trying to get a good fly time with the, the dasher. And then, yeah, with knee bend, knee angles as well. I was thinking Tuesday too, from a different angle though. And that's that, you know, some kids hamstrings are just one of those things where, if they're a little bit sore in the hamstrings better earlier in the week than later in the week. And, you know, if they're doing it often enough, they're going to be fine. But, you know, hammies are always one of those weird ones that kids don't like when their hammies are sore. And I think it's going to throw off their whole career. Yeah. Yeah. Now, 